Hello, Morris. Look at the sky over Magic Mountain. It's gone all dark. Ooh, the sky lit up all bright for a moment. That's lightning, Morris. That's what happens before it rains. What's that? Thunder. It means the rain's going to start any minute now. I hear thunder. I hear thunder, I hear thunder Oh, don't you, oh, don't you Pitter-patter raindrops, pitter-patter raindrops I'm wet through, I'm wet through Oh, look, Doris, the rain stopped already Oh, yes, it was just a shower Look at the sky now I see blue skies, I see blue skies I see blue skies The sun's out. Let's go and play. Maurice! Doris! Oh, hello, you two. Isn't the sun lovely today? But, Jane, you're wet through. Jane's wet through. Jane's it's wet... It's not funny, Maurice. <laughs> That's all right, Doris. When I went out, I forgot to take my umbrella, as usual. Oh. And then it poured with rain and I got soaked. Oh, poor you. Why don't you come and play with me and Morris? Morris? Oh, where's that naughty little hamster gone? <laughs> Jane, do you remember the last time Morris disappeared? Uh, oh, oh dear. Now I've forgotten, as usual. Well, this story should remind you. Listen. <laughs> Morris goes missing. I was sitting with Jane and Morris on the very top of Magic Mountain. There was snow everywhere and we were all looking at the view. Isn't it lovely up here, said Jane. Yes, I said. Look at those icicles. Hey, let's play a game, said Morris, jumping up. Oh, yes, I said. What shall we play? Hide and seek said Morris, and you're it. All right, I'll count to ten and you two go and hide. As I began to count, Morris and Jane ran off into the snow. One, two, three, four, I shouted. Jane quickly hid in some bushes and Morris ran behind the big tree. Oh, Doris will soon find me here, he sighed. I wonder if there's a spell in my magic spell book to make me invisible. Morris quickly turned the pages and found the spell. Ah, here we are. Now, let me see. Bing, bang, bong, fiddle-dee-dee, please make me so Doris can't see. Morris waved his wand and there was a big flash. He had completely disappeared. Hee-hee-hee-hee, <laughs> he chuckled. Doris will never find me now. Eight, nine, ten, I counted. Here I come, ready or not. Quickly I began to look for Morris and Jane. I looked behind the big tree and couldn't find them. I looked behind the wall and by the snowman, but there was still no sign of Morris or Jane. Then I heard someone giggling behind the bushes. I slowly sneaked round and found Jane huddled up in a ball. Ah, I've caught you, I said happily. Oh dear, said Jane, standing up. Oh, come on, let's find Morris. <coughs> Jane and I looked for Morris everywhere. I wonder where that naughty hamster can be, said Jane, scratching her head. We both sat down beside the big tree for a rest. Then I saw Morris's book of spells. Look at this spell, I said to Jane. Morris has made himself invisible so we can't find him. Let's play a trick on him, said Jane. How? If we use another spell from Morris's book, 
we can make him appear and pretend not to see him. Oh, that's a brilliant idea, I said. Let's say the spell together. Bing, bang, bong, fiddle dee dee, Morris should be where we can see. There was a flush and Morris appeared right beside us. Hee hee, he laughed. You can't catch me. He thought he was still invisible. I wonder where Morris is, I said. I can hear him, but I can't see him. I don't know, said Jane. I suppose we'll have to go home and eat all those lovely cakes by ourselves. Cakes? What cakes? said Morris. Oh dear, I said. If Morris isn't here, he won't be able to have any cakes. Suddenly, greedy Morris didn't want to be invisible any more. I'm here! I'm here! he shouted. I know, I said. We can see you, really. We found your disappearing spell and changed you back, you naughty hamster. Because you cheated, you can be it now, said Jane. Let's play tag and no spells this time, Morris. All right, said Morris. I promise. And he chased me and Jane through the snow all the way down Magic Mountain. Remember all that snow last winter? Mm. Didn't we have fun throwing snowballs? Yes, Jane, it was fun. Except when Morris crept up behind me and put snow down the back of my neck. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> A magic mountain looked so lovely and white. Everything was white with snow. Except that big black bird. Now, what was he called? Crow in the snow. Trees and fields were white. The world was full of snow. Everything was white, except for Crow. Black as coal and black as tar, he sat beneath a tree. Everything is white, he said, except for me. But then a breeze blew through the tree. The snow slid down below. Now everything beneath is white, even Crow. Of course, Crow. That was the name of the bird we saw on Magic Mountain. I wonder where he's gone now. Probably flown away. It must have been too cold for him here in the winter. Mm, ah, poor old Crow. I know a story about an old Crow. But she wasn't a Crow, really. She was a dear old lady called Jasmine. Shall I tell you about her? Oh, yes, please, Denise. The story's called Jasmine's Autumn Flight. <laughs> Jasmine was a very strange lady. Everyone called her the Old Crow because she lived in a little house covered in creepers and surrounded by trees where hundreds and hundreds of birds lived. Jasmine loved the spring and summer when all the birds came into her garden to nest and sing. But autumn was a very sad time of year because all the birds got ready to fly away for the long, cold winter. One autumn day, Jasmine was walking in her garden. The dry leaves crunched under her feet, and the birds twittered and chirped among the golden leaves in the trees. The autumn has come, they said. In a few days, we must fly off to a warmer country. Poor old crow said the birds, looking down at Jasmine. What a pity she can't come with us. But Jasmine had decided that if birds can fly, so could she. This year, when the birds leave, I shall fly with them, she thought. Soon the birds were gathering in the bare trees ready to leave. Wait! Wait! called Jasmine. I'm coming too! She clambered up the old oak tree to join them. Hey! There's old Crow up in the tree!
shouted a little boy from the road below. Yes! Ha! It's me! She called. I'm flying with the birds to a warmer place. And she flapped her arms as hard as she could. You'll never fly! Screeched a little girl. Just for a moment it looked as though Jasmine was flying. But then she started floating down to the ground like an autumn leaf and disappeared into an enormous pile of leaves. Oh, bother, she said, scrambling out of the leaves. But isn't it lucky it's autumn and I had a soft landing? Then Jasmine heard a very quiet chirping beside her. Oh, Jasmine said a little bird. I'm so glad you're back. My wing is broken and I couldn't fly off with the other birds. So Jasmine nursed the little bird all through the winter until the spring when the birds returned to nest and sing in her trees. And Jasmine never tried to fly again. like a bird. Why? You can't fly. No. And you haven't got feathers. No. And you don't live in a nest. No, that's quite true. Well, why are you like a bird then? Because I sing so sweetly, just like the robin. Can you sing Robin's song, Morris? I don't know, but I'll jolly well try. so sweetly when the days were bright thanks thanks for summer he sang with all his might robin sang so sweetly in the autumn days there are fruits for everyone let us all give praise in the cold and wintry weather, still you hear his song. Somebody must sing, said Robin, all winter will seem long. When spring came back again, he sang, I told you so. Keep on singing through the winter, it will always go. When spring came back again, he sang, I told you so. Keep on singing through the winter, it will always go. I'm freezing. What do you think we should do? I know. Morris, if you're cold, don't talk. Sing. Sing what? Um, how about here we go round the mulberry bush? Oh, yes. Ready? Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush on a cold and frosty morning. This is the way we wash our clothes, wash our clothes, wash our clothes. This is the way we wash our clothes on a cold and frosty morning. This is the way we sweep the house, sweep the house, sweep the house. This is the way we sweep the house on a cold and frosty morning. Oh, that's better.
better. I'm warm as toast now. Toast? Can I put butter and jam on you? Oh, don't be silly, Morris. But I feel like being silly. Maybe it's because it's spring. It's not spring, Morris. It's summer. Now settle down. Carol's going to tell us a beautiful story. Oh, goody. What's the story, Carol? It's all about a very little girl called Thumbelina. There was once a woman who longed to have a child of her own. So one day she visited a wise old woman. Take this grain of corn, said the old woman. Plant it in your garden and see what happens. The woman planted the grain of corn and very soon a golden flower bud grew. It was so lovely that the woman kissed it. At once the petals opened and inside was a little girl, no bigger than your thumb. The woman was overjoyed. I shall call you Thumbelina, she said. She made a bed for the little girl in a nutshell and gave her flower petals as blankets. And for almost a year the two lived very happily together. Then one night, while Thumbelina was asleep in her nutshell bed, an ugly toad hopped into her bedroom. What a pretty little girl, she croaked. She would make a beautiful wife for my son. And she lifted up the nutshell and hopped back with it to the river bank. She placed the nutshell on a lily pad right in the middle of the river so that Thumbelina could not escape. When Thumbelina woke up, she was horrified to find herself all alone in the middle of a river. The two ugly toads were staring at her. This is my son whom you will marry, said the mother toad. We are making a house in the mud for you to live in. And they swam away, croaking. Thumbelina burst into tears. She didn't want to marry an ugly toad and live in a house of mud. The little fishes in the river popped their heads out of the water to look at her. Oh, fishes, she begged. Please help me. So the kind little fishes nibbled through the stem of the lily pad and away it sailed down the river. La, 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 la. Thumbelina sang. She was so happy to be free. Soon the lily pad drifted to the side of the river and Thumbelina scrambled onto the bank. She found herself in a wood full of flowers. All summer long she lived in the wood. She drank the dew from the flowers and the bees brought her honey to eat. But autumn, then winter came. And now Thumbelina had no food or shelter for the flowers and leaves had all withered. Wrapped in a dry leaf, Thumbelina went searching for a grain to eat. Suddenly, she saw a little house. She rang the bell, and a field mouse came to the door. Oh, spare me a grain to eat, pleaded Thumbelina. Of course, said the mouse. Stay with me until winter's over. Thumbelina was very grateful. She liked living with the kind mouse. One day, the mouse's rich friend, Mole, invited them to his gloomy house for supper. As they walked through the dark underground tunnel to Mole's house, they came upon a dead swallow who had fallen through a hole in the roof. Stupid bird, said Mole unkindly. Fancy dying just because it's winter. But Thumbelina felt sorry for the beautiful creature and tiptoed back down the passage to the swallow. As she knelt beside him, she saw his heart was beating faintly. Why? He's not dead after all, she said. She fetched a straw blanket and wrapped the swallow in it. Then she poured some drops of water from an acorn cup into his beak. At last, the swallow opened his eyes. Thank you, my dear, he said. I feel better already. Thumbelina looked after him all winter, and they became close friends. <laughs> 
one day, when it was nearly spring, the field mouse said to Thumbelina, I have some good news for you, my child. My friend Mole wants to marry you. He will look after you well. But I can't marry him. It would mean living under the ground forever, gasped poor Thumbelina. You ungrateful girl, said the mouse. You shall marry him. That night, when Thumbelina went to feed the swallow, she told him her terrible news. I am so afraid and unhappy, she said. I don't know what to do. I am strong enough to fly now, said the swallow. Come with me. I'll take you away from this dark place. Quietly, they cleared the hole in the passage roof, and as the sun rose, Thumbelina and the swallow soared up into the blue sky. They flew and flew until they reached a faraway land. The swallow gently set Thumbelina down in a garden full of beautiful flowers. Hello, said a voice next to her. Thumbelina turned and saw a handsome prince no bigger than herself. Welcome, he said. I am the prince of the flowers. Will you stay and be my princess? Thumbelina felt she was home at last. She agreed happily to marry the prince and live in his beautiful flower land. In each flower lived a fairy, and they all brought beautiful wedding presents for Thumbelina. But the prince gave her the best present of all, a tiny pair of silver wings, so that she could fly with him from flower to flower. to show them I found my umbrella at last. Well, actually, it's not my umbrella, it's my mum's umbrella. Sometimes I pretend it's not an umbrella at all, but all sorts of other things. Listen to this rhyme. Mum's umbrella. If you borrow mum's umbrella, things and people spring to mind. Like a broom for Cinderella. How many others can you find? How about a horseman riding? Or a broomstick for a witch? Once astride, it's fun deciding which is horse and which is which. <laughs> Hold the handle by your waist and point the tip towards the sky. Take big steps and look stern-faced and be a soldier marching by. Left, right, left, right. Open up your dad's umbrella. Hold it out in front of you. Twirl it like a plane's propeller and fly up in the sky so blue. Wow. Hold a brolly overhead and climb up on your bed or chair. You've made a parachute instead, so jump and float down through the air. Now make believe a sunny day and put your brolly on the floor. You've got a sunshade straight away and I'm sure you'll think of something more. Vroom, vroom! Look out, Doris! I'm an aeroplane! Hey, Morris! That's my umbrella! Morris, give Jane her umbrella back at once. She loses it quite often enough without you taking it away. Sorry, Jane. Here you are. Thanks, Morris. Look! There's a cloud in the sky. Do you think it's going to rain? That depends if it's a rain cloud or not. Listen to Nigel's story. Quiet Mouse and Thunderclap Quiet Mouse was tiptoeing silently out of her den when she heard a deep rumbling sound. It rolled like a drum, louder and louder. It rattled and clattered until Quiet Mouse was so frightened she hid under a log. Soon the rumbling stopped and all was quiet again. Peering over the log, Quiet Mouse saw a large grey cloud moving across the sky. Why, Thunderclap, she called. I should have known it was you making that terrible noise. I can't help it, boomed Thunderclap. 
My tummy's full of rain. It slops about and makes me rumble. Can't you stop the rumbling? asked Quiet Mouse. Yellow man who looks after the sun can stop it, replied Thunderclap. But he says he can't help me now. Then I will ask Yellow Man, said Quiet Mouse. And she crept off to where the earth meets the sky. Yellow Man, can you stop Thunderclap's tummy rumbling? She pleaded. Indeed I can, if I can make the sun hotter, he moaned. But now I'm very busy making the sun colder. For winter is coming soon. Although she didn't understand how the sun could stop Thunderclap's tummy rumbling, Quiet Mouse begged Yellow Man to make the sun hot just once. OK. OK, he agreed at last. I suppose we can't have a rumbling tum disturbing the peace and quiet. Oh, thank you, Yellow Man, said Quiet Mouse, jumping for joy. So Yellow Man made the sun hotter and hotter. And the sun made Thunderclap grow and grow. <whistles> then his tummy really started to rumble and roll like a drum, louder and louder. Suddenly, Thunderclap burst and the rain poured down. Quiet Mouse danced happily in the rain, shouting, Now I see. The hot sun made you grow until you burst. Now we'll have no more tummy rumbles. Hooray! Soon Thunderclap's tummy was empty and the rain and rumbling stopped. He was now a beautiful, white, fluffy cloud. Thank you for helping me, he whispered. Now I'll be as quiet as Quiet Mouse. And do you know, he was... Morris? Yes? Could you be as quiet as Quiet Mouse? No, 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 no! It's spring! It's summer! Well, it feels like spring. Oh. And spring is the time when all the animals start to sing and dance. Listen to Denise's song. When the sun comes out in the farmyard, all the animals start to sing. In the heat of the day, in the animally way, they say hello to spring. The sheep go bah, and the horses bah, the pigs go bah, and the donkeys bray. The chickens go bah, and the cows go moo. The sparrows say tweet and the doves go brrr, bah, nay, oink, bray, cluck, moo, tweet, coo. To you, ba, nay, pray, cluck, moo, tweet, go. To you. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. 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 See you soon. Bye.